Hello, my friends. My name is Derek Humphrey, a long-time campaigner in this movement. Sorry I can't be with you today. Uh, it's a long way from Eugene, Oregon to Toronto, and at the age of 87, I have most of those little problems that old people tend to get. I'm not definitely ill, but uh, I find it too hard to uh, fly all the way from Eugene to Toronto and back. So forgive me if, if I'm uh, uh, doing this o over a video uh, now. Um, it, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this New Tech Workshop. I can tell you there's going to be some fascinating models and theories coming forward for us to contemplate. First, a bit of background for the many interested parties who are new to this type of work and investigation uh, which we have acquired. The spur to start this group, New Tech, came after the Oregon law was passed in, in 1994, a real groundbreaking law and the first, first foot in the door. But for the next 10 years, there was no progress because our opponents were so alarmed at the Oregon victory that they put up the shutters and, and uh, outspent us uh, in, in other attempts to change the law in, in, in other places. So, Dr. Philip Nitschke of Australia and John Hofsis of Canada decided to do something about the gap that there was in, in uh, people's choice to die. So in 1997, um, they got together up in Canada and uh, put together the, th the theory of an organization uh, which would uh, help people who were terminally ill or very seriously ill uh, to take their own lives if they wish without the help of a doctor. That's the key factor. From the outset uh, the mission of New Tech was to develop a method by which a terminally ill person or, or similar could bring their life to a painless and peaceful end without the involvement of the medical profession. Now, as suicide is not a crime, but assistance is, remember, and this being purely self-deliverance that they aimed for, no laws would be broken. Both John and Philip had been working on their own ideas, their own small techniques um, for uh, a simplified self-deliverance, but they needed testing, they needed input and, and breakdown of, of whether this would work in, in, in the real world. So they formed New tech. They soon asked me to join them because not only did I have the worldwide connections, but my organization, Ergo, the Euthanasia Research and Guidance Organization, had enough money to help fund the costs of research and, and meetings. New Tech has, is not an established organization, doesn't have bylaws and, and uh, no directors. Uh, we fly under the radar, perfectly legally of course. Philip, myself and Faye Gersh hold the organization together. We began by holding meetings, workshops in uh, California. Uh, the first ones were, were in San Francisco and uh, went very well. We were exploring, but we had no inst instant answers. Um, they were what you might call production workshops um, and uh, difficult to keep on holding those because of uh, ideas are sometimes short. 
So at all the world conferences since we held open workshops, uh, we, held work, we held meetings for persons who were interested and we learned a lot from the question and answer feedback from them. Now, thanks to Philip, we are back again exploring and developing. It, wouldn't, it would be appropriate, I think, to uh, mention the work of Charlotte Hydorn, uh, who had an organization called GLAD in, in Southern California. Uh, she was 91 year old, um, but a very feisty woman. And she ran a little organization uh, providing the helium hood kits. Uh, she sold at $60 each, many hundreds of them, and she gave many more, more away. And uh, her work came to an end when the FBI raided and closed her down, charged her with not keeping proper accounts uh, she was very single-handed and, and uh, was, was uh, deluged with orders for these, these kits. Um, but nothing came of it in the end. The, the, the case was dismissed, and, uh, but Charlotte gave up. And nobody else has felt uh, brave enough uh, to start the business again of providing helium hood kits. So therefore I uh, wrote a pamphlet which described how you could make your own uh, gas, uh, helium hood, um, also using nitrogen if, if you wish. And uh, many hundreds of people have uh, downloaded that guide which is called How to Make Your Own Inert Gas Kit. Charlotte died a couple of years later of old age, at the age of 93, and uh, we all remember this uh, strong-willed woman uh, who uh, defied all the criticisms and went away, went with her, making her kits. Um, great many people in the Right to Die movement have her kits stored away. Uh, along with their tanks of, of either helium or, or nitrogen for the day when they might uh, want them. We need a movement in the future for seeing social trends in death and dying and leading the way to achieve more uh, physician-assisted suicide and self-deliverance. Uh, oneself. We need both because laws are always restrictive uh, and in the, the six laws in the states in, in the USA and Canada are somewhat limiting. They're, they're good baby steps and we entirely approve and, and encourage them. <clears throat> when people call me quite often they said this has come into their mind that they might need this um, and after I'm assured that they're terminally ill uh, I refer them to other organizations uh, like Compassion and Choices who will handle uh, these cases but there are other cases where people are individualists uh, or they don't qualify under the law and that's the, where uh, the work of New Tech and the Final Exit Network comes into play. It's time, I think, now to consider offering persons with long term, big pardon, with long term untreatable go, serious go mental ahead illness. Start that whole paragraph over. We'll edit. Hmm. <clears throat> it is time now, I think. Wait one second. Wait a second and then mm. start. Okay. It is time now to consider helping people who have degenerative illnesses like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, and MLS, which a 
great many people uh, seem to be suffering from these days. And they deserve uh, the right to choose to die if they wish. And at a time of their wishes, um, a lot of people with these uh, degenerative, slow diseases are crying for help. Persons with terminal old age are beginning to say there's a time when it's not worth going on. Doris Portwood, who 30 years ago wrote that little book, uh, Common Sense Suicide, which uh, was the first person, Doris was the first person to describe balance sheet suicide. When do the uh, problems weigh so heavily against the non-problems, the, the benefits of staying alive against the benefits of, of dying. And in her little book, Common Sense Suicide, she was the first to ar argue that. Now that's coming back into the fore a, a great deal, especially uh, in the Netherlands and Belgium. They are uh, beginning to get such inquiries and are studying and working on, on how best to deal with, with the case of that. Um, <clears throat> we should begin to argue now, I think, um, about the Death with Dignity Acts, which have been passed in six states in the USA and in Canada. As written now, they may be politically acceptable, but do they solve all the problems? Evidence is that they do not. The six months limitation, or unlikely to die, should be changed to one year. Uh, we should also campaign for the law to be modified to allow patients who cannot swallow the lethal dose uh, to be given by the uh, doctor instead a, a lethal injection, which is now not very likely to happen and in some laws it is forbidden. We got to think through the problem of uh, Alzheimer's and degenerative diseases as long as those persons have signed a living will, an advanced directive, stating very clearly with witnesses and uh, medical evidence that uh, if they were in this uh, limbo, in, in, in trapped in, in, in a, a world where they have no mind and, and no feeling, um, just zombies, whether they, uh, with an advanced directive, could be helped to die. Anyway, that's roughly the, the, the past as to where, where we are. Uh, now this is an important workshop for New Tech with a host of new ideas and, and equipment. Um, so it will be very fascinating for all of us uh, today. We are seeking a way that ordinary people without medical, pharmaceutical or technical knowledge can have the right to choose to die at a time of their choosing. That is our goal, we have choice. Um, it would be so much better if the system was thoughtfully modified, democratically modified, so that it encompasses not only a good life, but a good death. We all deserve that, I think. A right to choose to die at life's end is the ultimate personal and civil liberty. Thank you, my friends.